Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now we start a new story. I'm Sam Johnson, a seasoned 65-year-old guy whose greatest joy in life is kicking back with a drink. I'm chilling at my go-to spot, a cosy little bar, just doing my thing, savouring every sip of my beloved liquor. It's my little slice of happiness in this crazy world. But then, out of nowhere, Someone swoops in and throws a wrench in my perfect moment. A group of five. Men had entered the bar a few hours earlier. They looked like troublemakers, laughing obnoxiously loud and bothering other customers. I couldn't stand it anymore and glared at them. They seemed to notice my stare. Hey, old man, what are you glaring at? One of the men confronted me. You got a problem with us, huh? The man shouted angrily and approached me. I couldn't just ignore him. Guys, aren't you being a bit too loud? Look, because of you, all the other customers have left. Since these men had arrived, other customers had left the bar, looking annoyed. Now it was just me, Nancy, and these five annoying men. We don't care. They left on their choice on their choice. Yeah, you got any proof it's because of us? I couldn't help but sigh at their childish excuses. Such a nuisance. What's going on here? Another man joined in after hearing our argument. Oh, Doyle, listen to this. This old man started hassling me. But bold of you, old man, to mess with Thompson. He's so tough that people clear the way for him on the streets. Indeed, the man referred to as Thompson was quite burly and had a fierce look. He could be mistaken for a debt collector. Well, he's just an old man, probably Stenile, ha. Huh? I see. Ha ha, that's why he dared to mess with Thompson. He's so drunk and senile, he'd probably argue with a random tree, ha ha. The two burst into loud, unpleasant laughter. Truly annoying customers. Old man, you do realise you're not arguing with a tree, right? Do you get that? I understand perfectly. I'm saying, can't you drink a bit more quietly? My words seem to darken the man's mood. Damn it, old man, cut it out. And then, gentlemen, please, that's enough. Nancy, the barrowler, tried to intervene and calm things down. I'm always grateful to her, but still. It's okay, Nancy, I said, calming her down. You okay? What's okay about this, huh? Are you messing with us? I'm not messing with anyone. I'm just saying one thing. You're being loud, so shut up. Don't you get it? The way you're talking is what's messing with us. Who do you think we are? We're part of the Sill Eater. Sill Eater? I've heard of them. Not local mafia, but rumoured to be pretty bad. We're mafia. Do you get that, old man? We can handle someone like you, an old man easily. I didn't say anything, but I kept glaring at Thompson, the man who was called out by name. I was getting irritated. Thompson noticed my defiant look, then he got pissed off. Don't mess with me. What's with that look? I'll beat you up, he said and came at me. But wait, please, no fighting in here. Nancy, the barrowler, tried to intervene desperately. Shut up. It's none of your business. Thompson brushed Nancy aside, and she stumbled hitting her back against the counter. I couldn't overlook that. Hey, you guys, does the Silita really get civilians? I thought that was a big no-no in the underworld. Don't you like to shush about the underworld? Listen, we're mafia. We don't spare anyone who defies us, whether they're civilians or women. So you're saying the Silita is rotten? Stop talking back to us. Cut it out. We'll hurt your family. Then, Doyle, 
Another man tried to reason with me. Ah, you've made Thompson mad. Hey, old man, just apologize nicely, kneel down, and apologize properly, and we might forgive you. If you defy Thompson and don't apologize, he'll redo it. You wouldn't want to put your family in danger, right? Sure, if I apologized right now, maybe things would calm down. But I couldn't forgive these guys. I apologize? No, it's you who should apologize. You guys should kneel and apologize to me and Nancy. That's only fair. My words seem to make Thompson decide to act. Hey, you guys, come here. He called over his three companions, likely also Mafia. Don't run away, old man, they said, approaching me. But then, please, stop it already. Nancy intervened again. What's your problem? Always butting in, annoying. Just stop it right now or else. Or else what? If you lay a hand on him, you guys are putting your own lives in danger. The five of them burst into laughter at Nancy's words, finding them unbelievable. What are you talking about? If you're going to make stuff up, at least come up with a better lie, huh? Yeah, right. As much as we don't want trouble, that lie is just too much, huh? Too annoying. Get out of the way. But enough already. Then one of the men threw his glass on the floor. Oh, you've been a pain since the start, along with this old geezer. We'll trash this lousy bar too. Hey, you guys, do it. With Thompson's signal, the other four men started wreaking havoc in the bar, smashing liquor bottles, throwing chairs, kicking tables. This is what happens when you mess with the sill eater, ha ha. Laughing, the five of them destroyed Nancy's cherished bar. I fully realized that the sill eater was a bunch of good-for-nothings. That's why I decided I'd never forgive them. Good, keep going, ha ha. While the five continued their destruction, I made eye contact with Nancy, signaling her. She quickly noticed and understood, discreetly went to the back. Hey, old man, look at this. This is all your fault. This is happening because you messed with us. Us, you get that. We even warned you to apologize quickly. Yeah, huh, that's the problem with stubborn old men. Ah, now it's your turn, old man. This is your punishment for disrespecting the Sill Eater. You get that? The Sill Eater. Are you guys really that scary? I said quietly. Ha, you still don't get how scary we are in this situation. You really must be senile. There are things scarier than the Sill Eater. What are you even talking about? There are two types of mafia, those who follow a code of honor and those like you who don't. At first glance, mafia like yours, who seem to have no honor, might appear scarier. You're the kind of one who will attack indiscriminately, whether the other person is a civilian or not, just because they've annoyed you. But the truly scary ones aren't mafia like yours. It's those who follow a code of honor. If you act against their code, they'll chase you to the ends of the earth. They'll use any means necessary, no matter how long it takes or how much effort it requires, to ensure their target experiences hell. What are you trying to say, huh? Then I revealed my identity. I should have introduced myself earlier. You guys must have heard of me. My name is Sam Johnson. As I said this, Thompson and the others' expressions changed. They halted their movement and turned serious. What did you just say, Sam Johnson? That's what I said, Sam Johnson, as in the Sam Johnson, the underworld hero. Sam Johnson, the legendary mafia. The name Sam Johnson is too well known in the underground world. There isn't a mafia who wouldn't know it. I became a mafia as a natural progression after my father 
who was also in the Mafia. As the successor of the Nauru, I worked diligently for the Mafia. I've done plenty of dirty work. I became known as the underworld hero during a conflict with the Ant Gran. At that time, the Ant Gran had their eyes on us, and several islands were ravaged. The Mafia kept growing in size, and many groups were attacked, becoming an uncontrollable force. The Ant Gran was the enemy of all Mafia. That's when Minouj spearheaded an operation to exterminate the Mafia. We gathered members from various groups and formed a Mafia coalition, and I was the leader. We took down their hideouts one by one, and the Mafia retreated, fearing the coalition. The Ant Gran stopped targeting us. For this achievement, I was called the Underworld Hero. Effectively, I had saved various groups from the Ant Gran. So those with a sense of honour felt indebted to me. If I ever found myself in a tight spot, Mafia from all groups would come to my aid. In other words, messing with me means making an enemy of the entire underworld. Ah, you're lying! Thompson exclaimed. No, we. You're Sam Johnson. That's just a coincidence. It's true, so there's nothing I can do about it. By the way, I'm now the president of the Nauru. You're probably just saying that. Sam Johnson is a well-known name. It wouldn't be strange for a regular person to know it. You thought mentioning a big name would scare us off, but we're not falling for that. But Thompson, if it's true, wouldn't that be bad? If this old man really is Sam Johnson, wouldn't we be making enemies with most of the Mafia? Nonsense. Why are you getting scared? But what if? Yeah, you might be right. Thompson became unusually cautious. The name Sam Johnson indeed had a huge impact. Hey, you. Prove it. Prove that you're Sam Johnson. You must have something, right? Like a driver's license. None. Any sort of ID card. A nun. Smartphone. None. What kind of person are you? You don't have anything. When I want to drink peacefully, I don't bring my smartphone. I always run a tab here, so I don't carry a wallet either. As I said that, the two of them started whispering. It sounds fishy. Maybe he's lying. Yeah. We can probably assume it's a lie, right? Maybe, but if he's the real deal, that'd be bad, right? What would our boss say if we make an enemy of the Nauru? We'd be abandoned in no time. There's no way our Mafia could stand up to the Nauru, and the other groups would side with them. Our boss would abandon low-level guys like us so fast. That's bad, really bad. Is there any way to confirm his identity? Nah, that's tough. The conversation was dragging on, so I interrupted their conversation. Don't worry. At my words, the two looked at me in surprise. Just stay here. And it'll soon be proven that I am Sam Johnson soon be proven. What do you mean by that just then? The door to the bar swung open. Boss. Are you all right? It was Brown, the current leader of the Nauru, arriving with about ten henchmen. My eye contact with Nancy earlier was a signal to call them. Nancy and I go way back, and of course she knew how to contact the members. So it's you guys, the Cader members, who messed with our boss. Brown's angry voice made the five men cower in fear. By now... They must have believed I was the real Sam Johnson. We were just kidding around. Exactly. We just went a bit too far in fooling around. Too far. Then explain this mess in the bar. The place was in shambles, wrecked by their recent rampage. A poltergeist, maybe. Yeah, maybe this bar is haunted. That's nonsense. You're still lying. Be ready for the consequences. 
Brown grabbed Thompson by the collar, and I stopped him. Brown, let it be. But boss, I don't want to cause any more trouble here. Understood, boss. Brown is a capable man. He understands my intentions with few words. That's why I chose him as the next leader. That's the deal, you get it. What do you mean, don't you understand? I said I don't want to cause trouble in the bar. So you're letting us go. You're quite optimistic. Of course not. What I'm saying is all of you are coming to our office. Hearing this, the five men's faces fell into despair. They moved immediately. We left Nancy alone in the bar and headed to the office with everyone else. Arriving at the office, the five members of the Sill Eater entered the room. Then we're terribly sorry. I'm sorry. The five of them apologized profusely, begging forgiveness. But in the Mafia world, an apology doesn't cut it. You think just apologizing will get you off the hook after messing with our boss? We didn't know you were the boss of the Naru. I'm not asking whether you knew or not. The fact you messed with our boss is the problem. I am sorry, but it was him who glared at us first. Sorry, boss. What should we do with these guys? I said, standing in front of Thompson, who's begging for pardon. You guys called me Sile, didn't you? See, Sile, do we say that? Do I say that then? Doyle answered. You did say it. Hey, are you selling me out? No, but you said it straight to him. There's no denying it. You could have tried a little harder to smooth things over. How am I supposed to do that? Doyle's right. You think you can just gloss over what happened at the bar? No, certainly not. You definitely called me Sile. What do you think now? Still think I'm Sile. No, you're very sharp and spirited. Yeah, yes, you don't show your age at all. More like a youthful vigor. Your skin looks great too. Do got any secrets for staying young? Shut up, you brats. What are you asking, sorry? Listen, whether you called me Sile or not, that's not important. But didn't you ask us I'd know nothing? What I can't forgive is that you rampaged in that bar and hurt Nancy. Yes, I don't care what they say about me. What's unforgivable is that they harmed the bar and Nancy. We're so sorry. We'll pay for everything we broke. So you think compensating makes everything? Okay, no. I didn't mean that. And you, you raised a hand against Nancy at the bar. It was more like just pushing her away. Don't make excuses. Sorry. Raising a hand against civilians is a big no-no in our world. Can't overlook Mafia who don't get that. You knew what fate awaited you when you came here. I will never forgive you, your Mafia without a shred of honour. I'm not kind enough to forgive guys like you. You or the Southeast leader will make things up for it, you understand. Yes, understood. That's the end of the discussion. Brown. Handle it. Understood. All right, take them away, Brown instructed his men. Then they gathered around the five and made them stand up. Let's go. Where to? To the docks. Hearing that, the five began to panic. Please, anything but that. Mafia like you are better off gone for the good of society. You've been roughing up civilians for too long. Time to face the consequences. We won't do it again, ever. Please forgive us. Help us, please. It's too late for any words now. You should have reflected back at the bar. It's too late. No, not that. All right. Take them away. Just then, the door burst open. Sam. The one who rushed into the room was Nancy, the bar owner I had been with earlier. She must have headed here right after we left. She already knew this place, and is familiar with the members, so it was easy for her to come here once she knew where we were. Please, 
not the docks. Anything but that, please forgive us. The men continued to beg for mercy. Nancy looked at them and said, please let them go. Perhaps her words gave them hope. The five men abruptly stopped begging. Nancy, a victim herself, why would she ask for these five to be forgiven? Why should I forgive them? You were harmed, too. But they didn't do anything that bad. They said some harsh words and broke things. But they didn't physically harm anyone. That's just this time. If left unchecked, they might harm civilians someday. They probably have in the past, please. Sam, let them go. On what basis? But if they know how scary you are, everyone would stop. That's not a reason. I was about to end the conversation, but Nancy persisted. Please, Sam, stop this. If I let them go, the Nauru will be taken lightly. We control all the mafias around here. If we overlook mafia attacking civilians, other mafia might start doing it too, you know, right? Because of the Nauru, mafia here don't mess with civilians, I know, but I'm still asking you to stop. Why? I don't want you to hurt anyone anymore for me. Her words left me speechless. Memories of the past resurfaced. Memories I wanted to forget but couldn't. During the frequent conflicts between the Chinese Mafia and the American Mafia coalition, an incident occurred. A civilian family of three got caught up in the conflict. I wasn't the one who laid hands on them, but I decided to attack the Chinese Mafia that day at a place and time with many civilians, knowing the risk of involving them. The parents died, leaving only their daughter. That daughter was Nancy. I've regretted that day ever since. That's why I've been financially supporting her. I transformed the Nauru into one that protects civilians, not harms them, and grew it into a major power that controls other mafias. I thought this would be my atonement to the deceased parents and to her. I know you've been trying hard for me, but it's enough. I don't want to see you get hurt. And even if they are mafia, I don't want you to harm anyone else. Hearing her say this, I was left with no choice. My intention in punishing the sill leader was to set an example for them and other mafia about what happens when you mess with civilians. In fact, my actions thus far had deterred other mafia in the area from harming civilians. But if she doesn't want that, then maybe I shouldn't proceed. Hey, you guys, I said to the five mafia who had caused trouble at the bar. Yes, what is it? Can you make a promise? A promise? Can you promise never to lay a hand on civilians again? Yes, of course, we absolutely won't. The other three also chimed in, promising. You know what will happen if we find out you've messed with civilians, right? Of course, it's straight to the docks, isn't it? Right? Remember that, we will be watching you. Yes, understood, that settled the matter. Brown, yes, let them go, understood. After releasing the five, they thanked us and hurried away. This resolved the issue with the five mafia. I'm sorry for asking too much, Nancy said to me as I escorted her back to the bar. No, I'm the one who should apologize for bringing up painful memories. It's not something you need to apologize for, Sam. But still, Sam, startled by her sudden loud voice, turned to her. Please forgive yourself. Your regret and apologies have been more than enough. Don't apologize anymore. All right, then. Come to the bar again. I'll be waiting. Yeah, I'll visit again. See you then. And with that, Nancy and I parted ways. Since the day I inadvertently involved civilians in a conflict, I believe changing the mafia world was my atonement. I protected civilians and showed no mercy to mafia who harmed them. But perhaps I need to rethink my approach now. It was a night that made me reflect on this months later. 
I was drinking at Nye's bar as usual. The place once wrecked by the five mafia was now completely refurbished. I had the Southeast leader members compensate for all the repair costs and replace everything that was broken. Everything's been replaced, even the old stuff, so it's much cleaner than before, Nancy said with a smile. Since that day, I've been thinking about how I should live my life, and finally, I found my answer. I've made a decision about something. What is it? My way of living. I'm going to stop hurting Mafia to prevent them from harming civilians. Is that so? But I can't just let Mafia who harm civilians go unpunished, so I'll ensure they don't hurt civilians. But without the violence, not hurting anyone and still protecting civilians. How will you do that? Intimidate them. Intimidate those guys from the Sill Eater. They've been much quieter since that day. I've realized that intimidation can be effective enough, so I've decided to go that route from now on. That doesn't sound too different from before. Do you think so? Yeah, but if it's something you're comfortable with, Sam, then maybe it's a good approach. My sins won't ever disappear, nor can I bring back what I've lost. That's why I'll spend my life atoning for my sins.